Hey everyone, it's Anthony Allen Ramos. Okay, we've got some new music for you today. Jake Wesley Rogers. I think you've probably heard about him because it's so much buzz and excitement around Jake. I uh, just put out the song Middle of Love and I can't get enough of it. It's on Facet Records and Warner Records and I'm joined by Jake today. How are you? Hello, I'm so good. So good to be here. Yeah, right. okay, well, congratulations. The song is out. The reception has been very positive, very fabulous. People are loving it. What has that been like for you? Um, it's surreal. It's it's always a weird experience, like keeping something so close to you and, and hidden and it's safe in your arms and then you throw it into the wind. But people have been very, very kind. So I'm, I'm happy. I'm very happy. <laughs> yeah. And this isn't your first rodeo. Obviously you've been putting out music independently for a little bit, but this is really, you know, to be on Warner records, facet records, this is kind of the first big major release, right? Yeah, totally. It's the first time kind of working with like a full team where it's not just like me and my manager, like screaming <laughs> I mean I was I was still screaming but there was a lot more people screaming <laughs> alongside me now there's one of those screaming people gotta be Justin Tranger who of course uh the great producer and songwriter worked with everyone from Selena Gomez to Justin Bieber Gwen Stefani the chick so many so many more uh tell me about I mean, also what it means for you as someone, a part of the LGBTQ community to be working with such a powerhouse like Justin, but you know, what was it like to kind of get into those sessions and kind of just work on this project together? Um, I mean, it was an absolute dream, truly. I saw Justin open for Lady Gaga when I was like 12 <laughs> with my mom. And I just remember seeing this person that was so free and so just unabashedly themselves. And it was very empowering. And um, to, to begin working together, I mean, it was immediately like, a, it, Justin was pretty clear, like, hey, we don't, you know, we don't have to write together. Just because I write songs doesn't mean we have to write together. But it was just so like, clearly good and like middle of love is like the second of song second song we wrote together so it's like well obviously we're we're there's something in the room when we get in the room and Justin is such a I mean it feels basic to say everyone knows this there's such a good songwriter um that it it, it it it's easy and it's and I think because our experience rhymes so much um in, in ways that matter and ways that I, and things I want to say. Like I spent a long time, uh, I started songwriting in Nashville and Nashville is not, there's a beautiful queer community, but as far as like the music industry, like it was a lot of years of just kind of working with, working mainly with straight cisgendered men. Um, and that's okay. That's nothing, nothing against them. <laughs> nothing against them. Um, but um, I think it was refreshing to not have to explain myself in the creative process, to not have to say, no, I need to use that pre pronoun or I need to do this. Like there is just something beautiful, I think, and empowering about queer people coming together and creating. Um, and it, it needs to happen more. It needs, it feels so special when it happens. So I'm just glad, I'm glad I get to do it with Justin. Love that, Justin, they are great. Uh, you know, going back to what you said about Nashville, I think you were born in Kansas City, right? And then made your way to Nashville. Did you find that when you were working in Nashville and songwriting that you kind of had to hide a little bit of what you were wanting to put into your songs for like fear that maybe they wouldn't get recorded or they wouldn't get picked up? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's interesting because I, it's so funny, one of my dearest friends actually um, sent me a picture of myself that we were writing together like three years ago and he sent me this picture and I do not recognize the person, you know, like kind of this beard and this mustache I was wearing 
I wasn't really wearing anything very fun. And I don't know. I feel like I, it took me a long time and it was in my own time to come into my story, to come into my words, into my truth. And I don't know if the, you know, what was happening on the exterior made that harder or better. I think it just, there came a point where I was like, okay, I just need to be who I am all the time. And whoever wants to get on this arc with me can get on this arc and whoever doesn't can float away. <laughs> I love that. And yeah. then, you know, like you said, your own time, your own journey, because there really is no timeline when it comes to coming out and self-acceptance. Everyone has their own way. Did you find that when you did, you know, have that moment of self-acceptance and wanting just to be your most authentic self, did you find that that made you an even better songwriter because you were probably able just to be more honest and forthcoming with what you wanted to communicate in your songs. Absolutely. I mean, I, it's been proven to me over and over again that the more vulnerable one is, the more honest one is, the more free other people feel to be vulnerable and honest. It's, it's, you think it would be the opposite. You think I'm putting my hyper specific story into a song and you think that because my story is so specific, you wouldn't relate, right? But the opposite is true. We all, like, one finds truth in other people's truth. And I think, well, Toni Morrison said it's, it's the, the role of freedom is to free others. Um, and that's, that's what I feel. I feel in, in coming into myself, finding my freedom, it's my obligation to to put that on the world and in hopes that hopefully that makes people realize that, you know, they have wings too. And that, and that the thing that they're afraid to say um, perhaps would free them, you know, and I, I don't, I'm not making music in order to like make people realize these things, but it is part of it because it frees me. The more, the more me I am, the more free I am. But that's a good quote. I should write that down. <laughs> the power one. Yeah, keep that one close. That is a good one. <laughs> well, music is so powerful. And I, I would imagine that you probably already received some really great feedback, whether it's on social media, in DMs from queer people, young queer people, especially that probably see you and are super inspired. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, hmm. I guess it's humbling to be in a place and I don't take it for granted to, you know, be on a major label now, to have a budget to make art and to make music and music videos that like explicitly show my experience. Because growing up, you know, like, you know, I grew up in like, it was, you know, like 2008, like, we had Katy Perry's You're So Gay, we had Lady Gaga, and, and they were they were in Firework and all this, like they were talking about queer things. They were showing it in their videos, right? But it wasn't from their perspective. And I think that's something that's shifting now. It's like, is, is now queer people have more of a platform and that we get to tell the stories. <laughs> and it's cool because it's happening everywhere. It's, it's in this year specifically, I feel like has been like a highlight for it and it's only gonna get better. And it's only gonna become with more representation. It's, it's, it's so easy, it normalizes it, right? Like I remember watching Glee in sixth grade and albeit that show is interesting to watch in 2021. I still kind of love it, but there are some interesting choices. But seeing a gay person in sixth grade on TV, I mean, that's it, right? Like that's, that's the gold. Um, and I think the more we exist and we're making art and people care about it, the more people will be free themselves. So, yeah. You mentioned Glee in sixth grade. I was gonna ask you if there was a musician or an artist in the music world that had a particular impact on you you know, whether it was to your own path of acceptance or coming out or just in the way, um, you know, of shaping your artistry? Yeah, I mean, there's been, there's been a lot, really. Um, even before, like, music in particular, I was really into musicals. Um, I loved, like, I loved Rent <laughs> in middle school. 
Um, and then in high school, I, you know, I had like a huge Fleetwood Mac phase and I'm still in a Fleetwood Mac phase, but Stevie Nicks is kind yeah. of my, so yeah, Stevie's kind of my like forever voice, my forever like witchy mystic songwriter mm. woman that I think at the end of the day, I just want to be Stevie Nicks. <laughs> I mean, I agree with that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Who you doesn't? Know, yeah. I mean, Let's make a Stevie Nicks duet happen. Um, thinking about, you know, this song, which, you know, just came out a couple days ago, uh, Middle of Love, you know, I think it's obviously on such a positive, you know, kind of momentum. But as we head into Pride Month, do we think that maybe there's going to there's gonna be another song coming? Because I know that the EP is coming in the near future. So that that we know, which we're very excited about, but maybe there'll be a new song for Pride Month. I think that you are very correct that there will uh, be a new song <laughs> for Pride Month. And I'm so excited about this potential. No, it, I mean, it's happened. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, but there is a song coming out. Um, and I'm, 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 I'm very in particular excited about this song because um, I think it, really pays respect to, I don't know, middle of love, I feel like I needed to honor my story and mm-hmm. I needed to show me first as an artist as my first like foot forward into this, you know, next iteration of my artistry. But I feel like the next song is really paying homage to the people who began this tapestry, right? That like started weaving these things before I was born. And, you know, it'll, it'll continue being woven after I'm gone. But I feel like it's important to honor the people who made it, who walked so we could run. So that's kind of the, I guess, teaser, the song that's coming. Up. And really that's what pride is all about. It's, I mean, yes, it's about having fun and rainbows and all that, but it really, for me, I always say, it's a moment to look back into history, learn all about the trailblazers who, fought for us before we got to this moment that we are in um you know so that's I don't know it sounds like the perfect pride anthem (laughs) (laughs) I hope so (laughs) I hope so but before I let you go middle of love I love it so much in case anyone hasn't heard it yet tell us a little bit about what uh it's about because I know you wrote it you know very specifically about your experience um you know, as someone in the queer community. So tell me a little bit about what Middle of Love is all about. Yeah, I mean, I wrote Middle of Love um, about um, my relationship I was in. And I wrote it from, you know, the, the, it's, I feel like when I listen to it now, even though I'm not in that relationship anymore, like, I feel like it's just a very honest reflection of how hard loving someone is but also how rewarding it is and um and at the same time like the whole concept of all these songs and the cp is like for so long i feel like i've kind of let love be this binary thing that it can either heal me or it can like hurt me or harm me and i was seeing it like through the eyes of my i'm the bridge i i say my grandma died because that's what people do the one left behind they really lose and I was thinking about my grandpa because my my grandma died and my grandpa was just, they were together for 50 years. And he was just a shell of a person after she died. And I was, I was just really struck by like how the absence of love in that way can kill you, really. Like I really watched it kill him. And I was just applying that to my relationship that I was in. That, you know, I was only in it for a little over four years, but but still I was just thinking about that. like would I die if I didn't have this love? Like, you know, these kind of big, big, big questions. Um, And that, that's a lot, but I guess a teaser of middle of love. Um, It's condensed into three minutes. (laughs) Oh, thank you for sharing that. Um, Yeah. It's a great track. Congratulations. Uh, Just a reminder, everyone, Jake Wesley Rogers, right there. Uh, New track is called Middle of Love. Uh, we definitely got an EP coming later this year, and it sounds like we might be getting a song during June for Pride Month. So, uh, Jake, you're the best. Congratulations. Send our best to Justin if you see them, and uh, I will hopefully talk to you really soon. I will. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.